Thanks, guys. I'm here with Justin Tuck, uh, who was here today in Alexander City for the Build a Better Reader finale uh, here at Stevens School. And first off, Justin, just want to say thank you for coming today. Hey, thanks for having me. Absolutely. So we'll start off with that first uh, before we talk about some of the post things you have going on after football. But um, from a literacy standpoint, obviously you do have your Rush for uh, Tuck's Rush for Literacy Foundation. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, we're almost in our 10th year at, at, with our Rush campaign. And basically what we do is we, we, we go around to the areas that um, have supported me throughout my football sports careers. And uh, we try to, you know, pick schools that, that need that help, need, you know, Title I schools, low-income area schools that uh, really, really could utilize um, funding, could utilize our grant making, could utilize um, our programming. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, it's really been beneficial for not only the schools we've, we've helped out, but us, you know, for me personally, me and my wife personally, get an opportunity to see the impact um, that we've been able to have uh, throughout the nation with uh, with our programs and these and these kids are really starting to, not starting to, but have over the years really benefit from. Yeah, and you know, coming from a small town like Rockford and being from Coosa County, uh, for you to be able to show that somebody from from that state could or from from that level could come up and reach to the success that you have, how's it feel to be able to come back now and and be able to be such a momentum driver for for your community? I mean, I, that's what it's all always been about for me. Um, you know, I grew up in a household with my dad and we didn't have much we had you know seven of us and you can imagine that, that things were thin uh, on days but you know they always found ways to to help other people in need and that you know not only for me but you know for my brother and my sisters alike it really um set the page for you know what we were going to be and how we were going to look at things as adults um, so obviously god has really smiled on me in my career in football and, and it's really given me a lot of opportunities to to, 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 to make change, to, to, to be a part of, uh, you know, helping some people out. And uh, for me, I mean, it, it, it's a no-brainer. Um, I, I think I get more of a kick out of it than they do, uh, being able to come back and talk to kids, being able to, you know, whatever it may be in, in light of, you know, uh, being of service to other people. Um, so, you know, like I always tell kids when I go speak to them, it doesn't matter where you're from. I'm, I grew up in Kellington, Alabama. It's a, I think the last census had us at 217 people. Um, but it doesn't really matter where you're from. It's all about, you know, whatever you want to do in life, there's no longer any excuses for you not being able to achieve that. And that's something I think we all have to continue to tell our kids that because if you continue to tell them that, they'll figure out that you believe in them. And if you believe in them, they'll start believing them in themselves. And um, I think you'll definitely see, you know, the impact. Yeah. Uh, we at Sports Blitz are working on a new project called uh, Sports Blitz Classics. And uh, many people don't realize, though, as great as you were on the football side of things, you were also a two-time state champion for the Central Cougar basketball team. Uh, can you talk a little bit about your high school background and what it was like to play uh, athletics there? Yeah, I mean, you know, growing up in the small town, man, you, you know everybody. So you, it's not like you go to high school and, and you, you run into guys that you haven't played with before. I think that was a benefit for us, uh, especially in Coosa County, because all of my Central High School team, we had played either with each other or against each other in the middle schools. Um, so our chemistry was already there. Obviously, we had a great coach in Coach Blue, um, and the fan base there was just phenomenal. Um, so, I mean, it was fun. I think looking back on it, man, it's probably one of my uh, most memorable and, 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 and enjoyable moments as an athlete uh, because at that point in time, it was just the game, man. It wasn't about, you know, the politics or the money or, you know, anything of that nature. It was just, you know, kids getting out there and, 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 and playing the game that they love playing regardless of if anybody was watching us or not. So, um, yeah, I, that, those times will, will continue to be fun memories for me. And speaking a little bit about uh, Central Coosa, they they bring in a, a new football coach, Barry Simmons. And after some years of, you know, some down years there, especially since post days of, of you being around, now they seem to be on the up and up first playoff appearance in quite some time. Uh, what's, what uh, advice or what experiences have you had so far with, with the team so far? Because I know that you did get an opportunity to come back last summer. And maybe that was a pusher for some of the success they've had this year. Well, I just think, you know, sometimes you just need a fresh start. Um, Sometimes you got to get somebody that's not from the area, um, and you know I think Coach Simmons is doing it the right way. He's building that that program from ground up. And he's he's brought in a set of rules. He's brought in discipline. He's brought in expectations of what is expected of you uh, as a as a central athlete, as a central football player, 
And for the guys that are not along in that road, no matter how talented you are, you're not going to play. And I think that sets a, a precedent for all the other guys. Because at the end of the day, I think all these kids want to do is win. I think they want to win. And and you bring in a coach like him that can, can provide that, that sense of leadership, that provide that sense of discipline while winning, I think it, it, it really sets you up to be successful in the long run. So I'm rooting for him. I already told him if he ever needs my help, he has it. And, um, you know, again, I think he's doing it the right way. And speaking of winning, although you do have the orange and blue shirt on today, uh, uh, you are a alumni of the Notre Dame, Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Uh, uh, before we talk about the, the career on, on the pro side of things, just reflecting back, we had a couple jabs there before uh, the interview started. But uh, just your time there at Notre Dame and what it meant to be an Irish football player. You know, I think for me personally, man, I, I looked at it uh, a little bit in the wrong light when I was there. Um, I didn't really appreciate um, – what it really meant to be uh, Notre Dame fighting the Irish in my four years there. As I, re as I graduated and left the, left the campus and really have had the opportunity to kind of see uh, what it means to other people when, you, when they walk up and they ask you where you went to school and I say Notre Dame and it's like the conversation switches the, their demeanor or their, their attitude toward the conversation totally switches. Um, and I mean, in a way, in a lot of ways, man, Notre Dame is, I mean, it's, it's like a cult. I know that's not the right word I want to use, but it is because people, people really just either you really, really, really love Notre Dame or you really, really, really hate Notre Dame. There's no in-betweens about it. And, like, I mean, I've, I've seen things where old women walk on campus with their shoes off in snow. That's, that's the reverence that they have for the university. And it's been, a, it's been a special place for me and my family. I met my wife there. They have continually supported me in everything that I've done um, obviously while I was there, but obviously post as well. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm in debt to them. Um, and I'll just say this as my dad always tells me, you know, as a, as a teenager, he did his best job to, you know, make me a man. He sent me off to Notre Dame, and when I came back from Notre Dame, they had finished the job. Uh, and I, I think that, that speaks volumes. And I'm, not, I'm saying that because I went to Notre Dame, but I know there are schools, you know, all over the country that do the same thing. And, I, you know, that's what I equate um, to being – a, a very prominent and a very special place. When you you take little boys like I was when I left there, and when they re, they return, they become back. They come back as men, and that's the I think that's the highest compliment I can get in university. Yeah, and so moving on to to the pro days uh, again, some just some attribute or some some accolades that you had: two-time Super Bowl champion, two times Pro Bowler, All Pro team as well in 2008. Um, always pushed for you. Always was somebody that wanted you to succeed. But I have to rip you a little bit. I'm a huge Patriots fan. You you cost me 19 to 0. I'm a little I, I hate that happened, but I was I was rooting for the Giants. I was rooting for you. I'm not gonna say I was rooting for the Giants, but I, I was rooting for Brady and the Patriots. So I uh, can you just flip back a little bit on on your time with the Giants and finishing up with Oakland. Uh, just your time in the NFL. No, I gotta rip you a little bit. Where are you from originally? I'm from Memphis. You from Alabama? Yeah. And and how do you become a Patriot fan growing up in Alabama? All right. Well, I'm, all right. See now, uh, we do we do have plenty of tape. All right, I'm gonna have to give the background and the the person that's filming this, Michael Forehand. He he got me into fantasy football. So, 2007, I make the move to get. You became a Patriots fan in 2007. I did. Oh, now I know that that's that's a terrible. Hold on. Now that hold, hold on. Hold on. Time. Hold on. Time. <laughs> no. All right. So this is. And long story short, we make a trade. I get Randy Moss, and this is before all of it happens. And so I don't – Tom Brady's still Tom Brady not throwing 50 touchdowns. Tom Brady, he's manageable, Tom Brady. And then he blew up, and then I kind of just followed it from that point on. But uh, I don't know. that Man, that makes me look bad because I am. But I, I'm not a fan of the Falcons, anybody here. But nobody really – I'm a fan of the players. But I do like Belichick and, and Brady and, and those guys. So, sorry, no no knock on Coach Coughlin. But, you you no. be the judge. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to say anything. You, you just be the judge. Now, who are you a fan of in 2006? All right, see, this other part. So, I was really a big Peyton – so, before I got into fans football, I was, I was a coach. Man. I, re, I really liked Peyton. But my allegiances had to change. Stop, 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 stop. All right, man. See, I know you can't – all right. All right. So all right. you telling me – that you went from loving Peyton Manning and the Colts to loving Brady and the Patriots? Now that sounds like a bandwagon type of fan, but it's really not. My allegiance has stayed strong for the last 10 years. If that's not the definition of a traitor. Well, I look at it as a uh, – who, who do you think is the, the, the worst traitor ever in, in U.S. history? Benedict Arnold. Say your name. Oh. <laughs> Man, he <laughs> – 
man, this has been one of my favorite interviews already. But uh, but no, but seriously though, we we I always did push for you. And so even the the second Super Bowl. Had, I was pushing a little bit more for you then than the first one, but I really wanted that 19 to know. But again, just talking, you know, how the NFL impacted you personally and um, some of the things you're looking forward to post NFL. Yeah, I think, you know, the NFL, the platform that, that the Shield, the NFL Shield provides us players, um, if you use it the right way, man, it, it really opens up a lot of doors for you. Um, if you if you go and you play the sport and you, and you do the things the right way, um, again, it's just simple, similar to Notre Dame. They really look out for you, and they, and, and they want to see you succeed in whatever it is that you want to do after that. Um, for me, man, I, you know, luckily for me, I understood that the NFL stands for not for long. Uh, so, you know, once I started to kind of make a name for myself there, I, I started to really think about what I wanted to do next. Um, and, you know, you know, an entrepreneurship degree in Notre Dame, business was always something that I was – that I found um, enlightening and something I, I really wanted to do. Um, so I just started working with guys that, you know, have me in their office. You know, the private equity space is really, really sexy right now, and that's something that, you know, I, I've had opportunity to work in the last three, four off seasons, um, getting an opportunity to go back to, um, you know, college. I'm, yeah, I'm 32 years old. I'm going to go back to school and uh, get my MBA from the University of, of Pennsylvania, the Warden School there. With a, with a focus on private equity real estate. So that's something that um, obviously I don't think I have the opportunity to do if not for uh, the relationships and the the, rela- I mean the the contacts that I made while playing football. I got you. Well, Justin, thoroughly enjoyed watching you through the, your years with the Giants. Taking over Strahan uh, was was definitely something that, that we were all excited about, and you definitely filled those shoes as, as great as anybody could. And then even going over to the Bay Area, uh, doing your thing there as well. So it was good to see you there. But, again, we just want to say thank you for the impact that you made on the community, and we look forward to seeing all the things you accomplished post-NFL. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks, Justin. For the Sports Blitz Live Look Look In, I'm Scott Hardy. Back to you guys.